I, the, um, a couple of days ago, I did a video about freedom from fear as a uh, kind of way of honoring the birthday of Martin Luther King, one of my heroes, um, because I think he was free of fear. And um, I wanted, I thought this post was so important that I wanted to uh, do a um, do a video uh, explaining, I think, one of the very subtle points of this post. And uh, I'll put a, um, I'm not sure if it's a link, but I'll, I'll put the address of the, of the post uh, embedded in this video. <clears throat> you can be free of fear completely and utterly now and for the rest of your life. This is not something for just, just people like the Buddha or, or Jesus or, or, any, or, or anyone you can imagine. It's, it's really for you. And there is not a method to it. There is simply the seeing of truth. And the, the real distinction, the, the most important distinction you need to understand is the difference between the body-mind and who you are. And um, what's really strange, I, I, I got a new puppy. It's not really a, she's not really a puppy. I, I got her from the pound, and she's about a year old, and, and she's, she pulls on the leash. And I got, I got one of these, you know, Cesar Milan books, um, and he's known as the Dog Whisperer, and um, he's, he's an expert dog trainer. And his expertise is, is based on the fact that, you know, he thinks and acts like a dog. And um, his most important point is being calmly assertive, not being angry, and not being, you know, fearful with a dog that um, is difficult to control, or the dog herself may be very aggressive. And this, you know, cued me into something. As I was walking the dog, you know, the dog would pull at the leash, and then I would sort of, you know, tug her back, and then something happened. I realized that there was no need ever to be angry or fearful. Um, no need to. And then what I realized was, was, and I've realized this many times before, is that no matter what the circumstances that are happening in your life, um, you know, if you're facing the breakup of a relationship, a really scary medical diagnosis, uh, and something that's much more uh, common, simply, you know, emotional depression, is that in that moment of seeing, two things happen. And the most common thing, the most common thing by far, and please, please hear this, the most common thing by far is desire. Okay? So, you know, there you are walking the dog. The dog does something you don't want it, her to do. She she pulls on the leash. And the desire is for her to, to, to be the way you want her to be. That's desire. And, and desire is also about the way that your ego wants you to be. You know, your, your ego wants you to be in charge. You, your ego wants you to be understanding, you know, controlling the, the environment. You know, that's all ego. And that's what happens when fear happens. It also happens when the opposite happens. Compliments happen. People, you know, say, oh my God, you're wonderful and terrific. And then the ego swells and go more and more, you know. I really like hearing this. And so that's desire. So in the moment it happens, fear happens, there's desire to not have it, to be away from it, to control it, to have some method, you know, to, to get around it. The key is to see that desire operate. So, you know, just imagine a fearful situation. And by the way, uh, let me backtrack for one minute. Let's imagine you're walking this dog, and the dog pulls on the leash. The important thing to, to see, and hear this very, very clearly, the important thing to see is not the dog pulling on the leash. The important thing to see is your internal emotional life in that moment. And in that moment is very important. 
you know, the dog's tugging, and then you observe this inward life of, of disquietude, um, perhaps a little anger, and then always desire, always, always desire is there. It's this great sea of desire. So you notice that, and then you keep on noticing it. You notice it throughout the day, because you don't need a major event for this well of, of disquietude and desire to be stimulated. It's almost always being stimulated. It's stimulated when the phone rings. When you get an email, it's always being stimulated. You can always observe it. So what I'm saying is, forget the external circumstances. They're really not important, at least not right now. Observe this internal life and keep on doing it. You might have to do it for a year. You might have to do it for 10 years. You might have to do it only for one or two days. And you'll notice something, if you keep on doing this, you'll notice something amazing. The observer, that which notices all of this, will get stronger and stronger. And something very special happens when this observer gets stronger. Something magical and magnificent happens. It happens because you're no longer identifying with the external circumstances of your life and you're noticing this great well of disquietude and desire beneath all of this. And you'll get a sense of, of, of God or the Creator or the Tao operating in this whole world of the body-mind. And you're here, you know, seeing it all. And when you see this, when you sense this kind of sacred beauty that's 100% trustworthy, when you see it arise, there is an immense sense of liberation. And you can just trust the way life is in this moment. And it's just amazing. It's just amazing. So... Watch this video again. Follow the process. Notice in the, des the notice the desire. It happens extremely quickly. Notice it, and don't don't operate on the desire. Just notice it, and then as you notice it, notice also the the desire to label and understand these internal processes. Notice that desire to to just get it. I mean, you know, I, I, I am by nature, my body mind is by nature rather intellectual, and I, and I always want to get it. And then see that as also another very, very subtle level of desire. And then, and, and then it will simply feel as raw energy, a kind of raw disquietude, a raw seething. It's neither good nor bad, it just what, is what it is. But you'll see that in any fearful circumstance, no matter what life throws at you, you are no longer that scared, entranced person. You're no longer that. You're, you're, you're actually, you're something altogether different. And it's magical and beautiful. And it's wonderful. And, and there'll be such a sense of gratefulness. Um, about your moment-to-moment -moment experience, you almost want to weep when it when it happens, and then, you know, and then you'll you'll go back to your old patterns, and then just go right back to okay, let's notice this internal life. Stop focusing on the external, and start, you know, focusing on the internal and noticing this well of desire. So, keep on doing it, repeating it, and you'll you'll this your this observer will become more and more powerful. I assure you of this. So. Thank you for watching, as always, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I as always, uh, have enjoyed making it. Thank you.